New research suggests that older people with mental health problems are much less likely to be offered treatment than people who are younger. A study of 80,000 patients by Plymouth University found that only 6% of those aged 70 to 74 would be referred for talking therapies for things like depression, compared with 23% of those aged 20 to 24. Professor Richard Bing led the research team and he told me about his work this morning. Older people generally um, are thought to have more mental health problems and more anxiety and depression. Um, the, the, the peak is is probably 21% at the age of 45 to 49, with a bit of a decline after that, although the evidence is mixed about whether that decline is real or not. Um, but generally, it, it's felt that there is an increase in in uh, mental health problems with age. Why is that? Well, I think there's there's some good rationale for why late mid-age, you know, it is, a, is a difficult time with, with families and jobs and, and all of those issues. Uh, in older age, the belief is that it's it's a combination of um, probably some biological factors, but most likely a combination of uh, vulnerabilities such as isolation, uh, lack of link with family and physical illness in particular. Do older people benefit as much as younger people from talking therapy? Do we know that? Well, what we showed is that for those who attended, actually benefit uh, was greater than the, than, than younger individuals. So, really? So um, there was a change from 13% it improved to 21% uh, having sort of maximum improvement uh, from the age of 18 up to 69. So despite not being referred, the the improvement rates are actually significantly better. Now, the Royal College of Psychiatrists has commented on your research and said that it shows clear discrimination against older people. Is it as simple as that? I don't think it's clear discrimination. I think the there's three factors that we can probably put together that result in uh, an effective discrimination. Um, those factors are the willingness of, of GPs and other practitioners to think, uh, you know, does this person have have a mental health problem? The systems themselves are not as well set up as perhaps they should be for individuals um, with multiple long-term conditions who are stuck at home or who don't see mental health problems in quite the same way as young people. And thirdly, I, I do think that patients themselves um, are not coming forward because of the, the way they uh, see uh, themselves, and not necessarily than seeing themselves as having uh, mental health problems, but also not wanting to bother their GPs, not seeing GPs as having the role of dealing with mental health issues and perhaps being embarrassed. So a range of patient factors as well as doctor factors and health system factors. And what can you do about all that? Yep, that's complicated. Again, I think it's not one simple solution. I think GPs need to be much more vigilant and be really thinking about when to, whether mental health is an issue. I think we need to, to really look at the systems that we're putting in place. And not all older people, particularly those who are stuck at home or isolated, have become anxious about seeing others, um, can... Um, attend in the same way as younger people. We need to have much more flexible systems uh, to deal with it and, and probably a range of different therapeutic approaches. That's Richard Bing, Professor of Primary Care Research at Plymouth University.